Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we're gonna to be installing a master switch on our camper trailer. Now it makes no difference whether it's a giant toy hauler or a small teardrop trailer like this one. A master switch is an essential piece of gear that we have to have on our trailer. So I'm gonna show you the very, very beginner friendly version on how to install one of these switches and we're also gonna talk about how to use one of these master switches. Knowing how to use a master switch can save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars in the life of our trailer. So over here we have a completed job. It really only took me about five minutes to do this. When I turn the switch up to green, it's on. When I turn it to red, it's off. Now this type of exterior mounted battery is the most typical application for these trailers. Sometimes the battery is located inside the trailer and we're gonna follow the same steps. Now, of course I can get some wire loom and take a couple extra minutes here to clean this job up, but this is a fully functioning master switch on this trailer. To do this job, we need a couple simple tools, but we only need to purchase two pieces of material. We're gonna get a short lead and we're gonna get a master switch that just shuts on and off. It'll have two lugs on the back. Some of the more advanced switches have different features, but we really don't need to use those for a job like this. So I'll include links in my description to both of these products, and I'll give you a couple different options with the wire. See, for my application, I only need a very short wire. So I'm gonna purchase a wire like this. As far as the size, you only need to match the gauge of the wire that's coming on your camper. So in my case, this is an eight gauge wire and I'm going to use an eight gauge wire. I see a lot of people going with very large double aught wires. There's no advantage to that in this situation. And in fact, they're harder to work with and can even apply more pressure on the switch when we're doing this sort of job. So you're gonna look for the number that comes on your wire. It'll either say eight gauge, like this one does, or it'll say eight AWG, or American wire gauge. So either way, we're looking to match the numbers. If you can't find a match, look for a lower number wire. So I could use a six wire here instead of an eight, but there's no sense going with a two and a zero or a double off. To demonstrate how we install one of these switches, I placed another battery up on top. Now your camper is going to come with a red and a black lead, a positive lead and a negative lead. And as you might imagine, you connect the red to the red and the black to the black, and your camper now has a DC circuit. When we install a switch like this, we're going to be installing it along the positive side of that circuit. So when you turn the switch off, it discontinues the flow of electrical force through the camper. There's going to be a couple reasons why this is a critical thing to be able to do with your rigs, and we'll get into that in a second. Now, one way to place this switch along the red wire feeding your camper would be to cut this wire and put new termination points on it to install into the switch. An easier way to do that is to actually get a short wire like this that's pre-made. It's inexpensive and makes the job a lot easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect the camper wire to the one terminal and screw the nut down. Now I'm gonna take my new wire slide it over top of the stud, put the lock washer, and then tighten the nut down. The next thing you're gonna do is tighten these two nuts down snugly. Now, if you were doing this for a living or doing it every day, you'd probably wanna use a torque wrench. They're usually about 110 inches per pound, but uh, it's, you're more than fine here just using a normal ratchet and snugging these up firmly. So now with our two wires attached to our switch, we have the wire coming from our camper and our short lead here. We're gonna attach the short lead to the positive terminal on our battery. And whether it's a wing nut or a bolt, we're gonna fasten this down securely and now our switch is fully functioning. 
So now that we have a switch that's functioning properly, we want to find a good location to place the switch. One of my favorite spots on these outdoor locations is right under the handle here. Now there's a number of ways that we can do this effectively. And like I told you before, I'm going to clean this up a little bit when I'm done. What I want you to do is remove the bottom panel from your switch. You don't want to remove the sides and you don't want to remove the top. Even though this is a waterproof switch, the last thing that we want to do is create a reservoir in here that fills with water. You don't want to open the front panel because if you're driving in the winter, your tires are blowing water and snow right in this direction. Most of the time, this is not going to cause a problem, but I have seen it actually complete the circuit and break the switch. So this is a good tip to keep and make sure that the water can just drain freely out the bottom. The next is finding the way that we're actually going to fasten it to the box. Now, these switches come with hardware that you can drill holes through the box and then screw them uh, with a small bolt and a nut. Next, I'm going to show you a couple alternatives and what we have to look out for when we're doing that. Okay, now I took this old battery box out to demonstrate how we're able to attach this switch in different ways. Now, I like to fix the switch under the handle here on the bottom. Now to do that is simple. We can place the switch that's in a place that's most easy for us. If we're using a short wire like this, you can place the battery in any orientation that you want. So there's no need to move the switch to deal with the terminal placement. This is reversible. So the next thing that I'm going to do is find a way to attach it to this. But if we use the hardware that comes with this, I want you to realize that this has a pretty sharp end. So if I let this sit in the battery box and then drive down the, the road for miles, there's a chance that I'm actually going to etch a hole through the side of the battery. I've seen it happen before. Nothing sets on fire, the battery spills its electrolyte, and then it's no good anymore. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks when mounting this to the side. The first trick is how I did this one here. I went with the threaded side out and left the smoother side on the inside. Even when I do that, I like to put a small plastic shim behind this bolt, behind the head of this bolt, so that it doesn't scratch the internal battery. I use little flexible plastic like this. You can really use anything. But if you're going to do that, what I want you to do when you service your camper each year, I want you to inspect this and make sure that a hole isn't developing from the head of the bolt. Most of the time you're fine for decades using a piece of plastic. Now, whether you go threaded side in or threaded side out, sometimes there's enough space around the battery to actually find a whole piece of plywood to put in the end. Now, this is going to be a done deal. You're definitely not going to wear through the plywood. Another advantage that I have found in doing this is sometimes you can ditch the factory hardware and actually use stainless steel screws and screw it into the plywood. This makes for a secure finish, but what you want to make sure is that you measure ahead of time because I don't want the head of the screws coming through the plywood either. The next tip is the easiest. You can use double-sided tape if your switch has a nice flat back like this, like a VHB tape, and stick it anywhere you want on the box. Most of the time it makes a really good permanent bond to the side of your box, but even if it falls off, these wires are gonna catch it and it's not, you're not gonna lose your switch. Okay, so to review this install, you have the wire from the camper going to the switch and a short wire going from the switch to the positive terminal. This is all that's required to create a master switch on your camper. How you install it is up to you. I showed you a couple different ways to do it this way and caution that you really don't want to expose sharp pieces of metal inside your battery box when you're bouncing down the road. Now we're going to talk about why this is so important and how you're supposed to use these master switches. You see, with 
DC or direct current electrical systems, the electrical force actually flows through the wires. With AC or alternating current, it vibrates. It's different ways for wires to conduct electrical force. So in these DC systems, the electrical force moves through the positive, powers the converter and all of your lights and fans in the camper, and then it passes back through the chassis or the frame to the black side or the negative side. This black wire over here is actually just attaching to the frame. The grounding uses the frame like a big wire. So when I place this switch on the positive side, it's like turning the spigot off on water. I'm stopping the electrical flow to the camper. Now when this camper is in storage, this is really important. This camper will drain this battery down in like three or four days. So when I have this switch, I can store the camper for a few weeks without having to apply a trickle charger. That's a major, major feature when you're storing it. Now, when you're out boondocking and you're using this camper without shore hookups, I wanna keep this switch in the off position as much as possible. See, in this demonstration, the electric is flowing through the camper. In an ideal world, as much would come back as what left, especially if I'm not using the camper. But what happens is things like your CO2 detector, smoke alarm, stereo system, they're stealing some of that flow when they're being, uh, whether they're being used or not. So less juice comes back to the battery than what leaves and the battery draws down. So when I'm using the camper, I actually shut this off after I get up in the morning. At night, I'm using the lights, the fan, maybe I'm listening to music, charging my phone. When I get up, I shut the camper off. Having it off for, let's say, 16, 17 hours a day is going to save your battery life in a way that could double the amount of time you spend out in a boondocking experience. If you have something like a 12-volt refrigerator, I would use a portable power station, or you can even run a dedicated line off your battery. These are more advanced techniques that I can show you in a later video. For today, I wanted to show you how to create this interrupter, how to use this interrupter, and show you that you don't need to buy a bigger battery if you can learn to be a little bit more efficient with a switch like this. You also won't have to replace your battery as much when you're not drawing it down every single day. So a switch like this more than pays for itself. Use the link in my description to find the, the switch that I test and use, as well as some good safe wire for this application. Now this is the point in the video where I start begging for you to subscribe and most of you sign off, but just realize when you click that subscribe button, you support the channel. It's an unmonetized channel, so when you click that button, it really helps us out. It promotes us and allows us to create more content. I hope you appreciated this tip, and if you have any questions or you do yours a different way, shoot me a line in the comment section. I'd be happy to respond. Thank you very much. Have a great day.